What's going on, everyone? So the Toronto Raptors are really struggling this year. They currently sit in 11th in the Eastern Conference at 20 and 26. They're on a two-game losing streak, and they are quite a ways away from even a play-in spot, right? I mean, they're about two and a half games out of a play-in spot, um, but they don't really want to be a play-in team. This is a team that had a lot of hope, a lot of promise. That was a team that really believed that they could make some noise this year and be one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference, and it just didn't work out. Uh, they have a lot of players and a lot of questions uh, going forward. Masai Ujiri is definitely going to have his work cut out for him. What is he going to do with, uh, you know, Brad Van Bleet? Uh, what is he going to do with Gary Trent Jr.? Some of the other guys, you have OG Ananubi. Uh, if, the, if they get the right package, he could be available. Pascal Siakam. He's available. Basically, the Toronto Raptors have opened up their entire roster and said, basically, everybody outside of Scotty Barnes, you could have for the right price. And they obviously want a haul for some of these guys. OG and Anubi, they, they want you know several draft assets, young players, things like that. Pascal Siakam, same thing, right? They want draft assets. They want young uh, players. They want all kinds of things to, to make it expendable or, or justifiable to trade a Pascal Siakam. And Pascal Siakam is a, a very solid player that could do a lot of good for a lot of teams. Like he is kind of like developed into that point forward that many teams uh, could really use, right? Three and D, a guy that could get you, you know, 20 plus a night easily i mean in the right situation uh maybe even give you more uh, he's still relatively young he's 28 years old he's got good size good length uh, at six eight like he is a guy that could really be a game changer for several teams and one of the teams that could meet the asking price that is asked of pascal siakam as well as could probably really use a player like him which toronto's even been been using him at center a lot this season, which is really surprising as well. Uh, but a team that could maybe kind of look at him and go, man, this is a piece that that could take us over the top and maybe win us another championship is the, the Golden State Warriors. Now, the Golden State Warriors have more than enough to put a package together to go get Pascal Siakam. Pascal Siakam on the Warriors could be terrifying. Seriously, you got that point forward, point center now, I guess, that uh, that you could use Right, like you could start him next to Draymond, right? You could put Draymond at the five, Pascal at the at the four, Wiggins at the three, uh, you know, Clay and Steph at, at your guard positions. Come on, I mean that's that that's scary. That is a really good team. You got switchability, you got defense. Like that's like what the Toronto Raptors were hoping to put together, right? With with uh, Van Vliet, Gary Trent. You know, I, I mean, they're not, of course, Steph and Clay, but that's the idea. You got the two shooting guards that could shoot the ball, right? You got your 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 three and D small forward and OG, uh, just like Andrew Wiggins. You got Pascal Siakam uh, as Pascal Siakam, and then you got you know your your center, your small ball switchable center, right? Like that is something that the Toronto Raptors would ideally have liked to build. Well, the Warriors could easily build that. And Pascal Siakam on the Warriors could add just such another layer to this team. Being able to, to run the offense. You no, know, and he's Draymond insurance. Very likely the Warriors are going to lose Draymond Green. Whether they trade him, whether you know he ends up leaving on his own, whether they just let him go, whatever. Whatever ends up happening, sooner or later, Draymond Green is probably the odd man out. And I mean, even Draymond Green recently has talked about it and kind of said, like, he understands the business. He knows that, you know, his time with the Warriors is very likely coming to an end. He's even kind of accepted it. So if the Warriors really do plan on moving off of Draymond Green, Pascal Siakam would be perfect. You got similar size, you got length. Uh, defense also Siakam is just the better scorer right he could shoot better he could he's just he would be an upgraded version and he's still young enough to be a piece for your future right like he's good enough and and young enough to where you could have him for the next several seasons and and be sort of a primary fixture having him and and Andrew Wiggins at both wing spots man good luck good luck defensively they would be monstrous like they, 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 you, you can put the ball in any player's hands and they can just go make a play. Like, they've just won a championship. And the Warriors are struggling this year. Um, some of that has been injuries. Some of that might just be hangover. Some of that might just be, you know, the, the locker room drama, right? Between uh, Jordan Poole and, 
and uh, Draymond Green, right? Like there's there's definitely layers, I think, in my opinion, to, to just the struggles of the Golden State Warriors this season. But still, they get into the playoffs. You still got to worry about them. And then you add Pascal Siakam, like good luck. Pascal Siakam is like a perfect Warriors fit, perfect Warriors type of player. And you could get there easily, right? Like give them like James Wiseman, uh, Kaminga, and a couple draft picks, you know, two or three first, something like that. You know, it, it just, it, it's it's not out of the realm of possibility for them to get there. Or you give Kaminga, Wiseman, and like Moody, maybe like a first or something, right? Like give up some of your young pieces. Um, you know, because the young guys haven't really been what you hope for. Some of that is probably it's the Warriors, right? Like you're not in a position, you're not a team that's rebuilding or really retooling with young guys, right? Like you're a team that's trying to 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 continue to win and and ride out Steph and Clay's window, right? That's that's what your your primary goal is. But if you're Toronto, you're looking for pieces that can kind of help you now and the future, right? Like you're trying to build a team that can go a different direction, have a different look, right? So Kaminga, he going to a team like Toronto or Wiseman going to a team like Toronto or both, you know, whoever moves uh, Moses Moody, like guys like that, like you send those guys to Toronto, they're going to get to be more free. They're going to get to kind of go through the and ride their lumps more. Toronto isn't competing for championships right now, so you know they're 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 gonna get the the shine and the opportunity. You know, Kaminga kind of gives you that sizable wing that that you could have for the future. You get a, a, a quality center that has a lot of hope and promise. He's just really not been able to fit in the Warriors. How much of that is just it's the Warriors and he's just not a good fit, and how much is that you know that he's just maybe not the the guy that teams hope for. Right, but it gives you an opportunity. It gives you a fair shot. It's a nice young package. Yeah, you, you probably get a couple picks. Like the Warriors could easily go and and meet the asking price for a Pascal Siakam, you know. And and now you're off to the races, and you have a really good chance of winning another championship, maybe even several. Right, like if everyone kind of comes in a form. I, I just think if you're the Warriors and you could get Pascal Siakam, I think you do it. The Warriors have shown they don't care about paying the luxury tax. They'll pay the luxury tax. They'll do whatever they can to win, right? So if you could put a package together, I mean, you're going to have to throw in some salary pieces and stuff too. Maybe maybe you even throw in Draymond, right? Maybe you add Draymond to the mix, right? Like that could be a possibility too. Like, and if you're the Warriors, you still do it in my opinion. If you could swap Draymond for Pascal Siakam, you do that, right? I mean, Draymond brings a lot to the Warriors. Don't get me wrong, the toughness, stuff like that, but he's not Pascal Siakam. You know, so if you could get Pascal, I just think you do it. I think you do whatever it takes to go get Pascal. And I, I think that I think that this would be a mutually beneficial move because both teams are in very different places, right? Though the Warriors, they want to continue to win right out the window. Toronto, if they're trading Pascal and everyone else, then they're they're going into, you know, a, a jump started rebuild. I, I don't think they're completely rebuilding rebuilding, but I think they're they would be in a jump starting rebuild. And to get these young guys, you could always package them later in another deal along with the assets. Like, so if there is, you know, if you you find a guy that you really want to go after and maybe make a, a big play for or whatever, you can, right? Like, it just gives you potential for now, the future, and also other trade chips, right? So, like, if you get the picks. Uh, and then, again, for the Warriors, I just, seriously, think about it. Like, look at the Warriors right now. You got... You know, Jordan Poole, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, uh, divincenzo has been good for them. But, like, imagine if you, like, these five that are on the screen right now, imagine if Jordan Poole was Pascal Siakam. Good luck stopping them. You got shooting, you got defense, you got playmaking, you got scoring. I mean, Draymond, Wiggins, and Siakam as, like, your front court defensively? I mean, good luck. Good luck. Right, and then you have Steph and Clay that you need to worry about. Draymond, Wiggins, and Pascal can all pass the ball out the post. Can all make plays. Can all you know dish it out. Like so, I just I just see it. I'm just like man, and I'm not a Warrior fan by any means. Any means, I, I have no dog in this fight. Whether I'm the Warriors or Toronto, I, I'm a Laker fan. Especially many of you that are subscribed here and been subscribed here for a long time. Many of you are subscribed to my Lakers channel as it stands, Lakers. So you know I don't have a dog in this fight at all. 
I just think if you're the Golden State Warriors and you have enough to go get Pascal Siakam, go get Pascal Siakam. Go get him. Because I really think that he is enough to get you back into contention, especially with the West. The West is so wide open. The Warriors, even right now, currently, still have a very good chance of coming out the West, right? Still the Warriors. Once you get into the playoffs, it's a new season, and you're still the Warriors. So I still think the Warriors right now, currently constructed, I think if they won another championship, I don't think anyone would be surprised. If you add Pascal Siakam, good luck. you know. And, and I just think that he he's a guy that would just fit their se- system seamlessly. I don't think that there would be much trial and error. You know, you're going to have to build a little bit of chemistry. You're going to have to kind of navigate a certain a couple things here and there. But for the most part, I think it would be pretty cut and dry. You know, you, you he could do a lot of the same stuff that he's doing in Toronto. And, like, you could use that. You could use him as, like, your point forward, right? You could run plays and get him the ball and design him the ball, right? Like, I don't know. I, and he's just a guy that could go get you 20-plus a night every single night. You have six guys now, five guys now that could easily just go get you 20 on any given night. Like, how do you keep up with that? And now defensively, you're absolutely monstrous, right? Like with, with Siakam, Draymond, and, and Wiggins. You know, I just, I, I really like that. I really think that would be a really good lineup. It gives you Draymond insurance for when Draymond eventually uh, inevitably leaves, right? Now you you don't lose that that point forward that you run a lot of your offense and plays through. Well, now you got Pascal Siakam. There you go. He can kind of be the, the main fixture in your offense, a guy that could get the rebound and do a lot of the same stuff Draymond does, right? Like, that would be huge for the Warriors going forward. And he's still young enough to where you could have him for the next seven years, right? And and it'd be fine. So I, I think that that's a good move if you're the Warriors. And then if you're Toronto, you know, you're getting you're getting a nice young package. You're getting draft picks. You're getting players. You're getting everything you could want to to. I don't know how much better of a package you would get than what the Warriors could offer. The Warriors could really offer a really nice package. But those are my thoughts and opinions. And as always, I pass a question on you. I'd love to hear yours down in the comment section below. What do you think? Do you think, yes, if you're the Warriors, go get Pascal Siakam. That would be a great trade, great move. Do you think no? Uh, You know, save it. Do something else. You don't really need them. All right, we feel whatever your thoughts are. I'd love to hear it. Let me know down in the comment section below.